day she was digging a privy and I had talked to her that, you know, this is the day we're going to do it. And so she was like, okay, I'm going to be up there at the time you're going to, so we got to meet and, and, you know, got to hang out, talk about it, what it was and all the people going up. And then finally we went up and finally made it on top of Haystack and met some really cool people up there. Talked to a, you know a bunch about what I'm doing. I met a podiatrist, believe it or not. Nice. He was like, can, can, "Can I take a picture of your feet on this rough granite?" And like, I want to, I want to go back and talk to my other doctors about like what you, you know, what this is and how you did this, and maybe you're onto something. And I was like, "Hey, well, that's cool too," but it was just, it was, it was the the best day of my life with my wife in on haystack in our wilderness and this most beautiful setting, and it was the most beautiful day you could ever ask for it really was and i remember standing on haystack and rhiannon took a picture of me because um i decided to finish on whiteface because uh there's a couple of reasons i decided to finish on whiteface um i uh was a ski racer was a ski racer growing up with nicef they're a big part of my family um i love them and what they do and um i skied from i ski raced from seven to 18 years old and then I, ever since then, I've coached for NICEF. So I was like, I want to finish on NICEF and kind of, you know, give back or finish on Whiteface and kind of give back to them too. So I, there was a picture, I was standing on Haystack and I pointed over at uh, Whiteface. I was like, I'm coming for you tomorrow. And that was what I was doing. I was coming, coming over there for tomorrow. It wasn't the, as nice as a day as it was on Haystack, but um, it was, it was just, like I said, best day of my life. Sure. So that, that's freaking beautiful it that, really was that I, is the finish of your like your your long time 46 yeah officially yes, officially and since i've been nine day, years old and the next day i did it again on the barefoot next yeah. day was barefoot that's that's beautiful it really was those cool. are two big accomplishments back to back like that, that that's a good 48 hours it, it was that's a good 48 it hours. was that's why i said it was the best 48 hours of my life i think and i got to spend it with the people i love and and doing something that I really do love and I want to continue to do. That's great. So uh, take us through Whiteface. Okay. This was an emotionally um this was an emotional journey for me. Um Whiteface and Nestor. After I'd done Haystack and had that great day. I decided I wanted to do Whiteface by myself. You know, Rhiannon asked if she wanted to come, you know, if she wanted me to come with me. I had other people, my brother and uh, my brother Patrick, he, he's an amazing person too. And he wanted to come with me too. And I was like, no, I, I, I think I need to just do this myself. Because this, like I said, this journey is, it, for me, wasn't about the next challenge. It was a challenge for myself. And I I got up there at, and this is hilarious. Um, I, we parked at Marble. I parked at Marble Mountain, and I was so excited and ready to go for this, but yet also apprehensive in the way like I didn't want to do it too quickly because I didn't want it to be over. Like I was afraid for it to be over. Um, so I wasn't thinking about anything. So I I got out, and there was a few other cars there, but I I believe I was the first one to sign in. But there was people getting out, and I shut the doors and I started hiking. So I got up to um, where the trail goes off to Esther and uh, I've been, I kind of, that point I started updating people on Facebook like live. So I was like, okay, here I am. I started the next, next picture. I got up to here, Marble Mountain. Then I hit lookout and then, you know, onto the Esther trailhead where the little sign is. And when I got there, I kind of just took a second and I was like, cause I knew my family and friends were going to be, I think we planned on meeting at the top at 9.30 in the morning, you know, at, or you couldn't meet at the top because of the whole COVID situation. So, you know, there's a, that one bend in the road where the trail comes yep, right up to the big stone road. road. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So that, and that, there's a little parking area right there. So I had everyone meet me there. Uh, my plan was 9.30 because I'm a huge Patriots fan. As you can say, I needed to get back for the Patriots game. Um, and of course my family did too, because they're big family uh, Patriots fans as well. But I, I went early and, and I knew I was going to get up. I was going to be up there way earlier than 930. So I kind of just sat at that junction and thought about my my whole journey. And it wasn't – it wasn't more – it was more of not the journey of what I did there, but it was more of like w- what I've done in life and and where I'm gonna, what I'm going to do further in life. It was – I sat down and thought, wow, like – you know, look what you've done in nine weeks and, and look how much fun you had doing it. So 
don't let this be the end. Like, we, uh, you got to do something else. You got to do more. Because I've never felt so happy. I've never felt so in control of my body. And I've never felt so in shape as I did that day at that, that point. And I sat down and I re- reflected on everything that I, I have done and that I want to do. And that was a pretty emotional point. I, 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 I'll be honest. I, I, I cried the whole way up to Esther. And not because of I was sad. It was more because I really connected with myself. And I think the mountains let me do that. Um, it was a really healing moment for me. Um, so after that, I got up to, uh, Esther and took a picture up by the little plaque and posted that. And then I knew I was on to the next one and, or on to, you know, white face, but my family was first. And, and I know this is probably not the smartest thing to do where I didn't get to the top first because I wanted to make sure my family can get home. Cause you know, they had family to go to for football games and all of that. So at nine 30, and they were there. I went over and we, we celebrated me completing it um, at that parking lot. And I hadn't completed it yet. I knew I could. I mean, I knew I could do it. It's point two or whatever sure. it is from that road. But I, I just felt it was the right thing to do d- during the whole COVID situation. The fact that I couldn't come to the top. And the fact that they were up there even just to support me. I mean, they got up early. They took time out of their day. They paid the money to come up the toll road. Like, I wanted to, to be there for them. And, and But... And there was a couple, you know, really close friends, um, George and Kate, they were there with me and Sandy was up there with little Emmy and my aunt Cheryl and uncle Mike, they, I, they took time out of their day and it was, it was just my brother Patrick and it was a, it was a very emotional day. So after they, you know, I let them leave and, um, my friend Logan, um, he's, uh, he's been a really big part of my life. He's an incredible uh, person. He's going to go away to play football um, at college. And he met me up there, too, with Rhiannon. Uh, they came together. Uh, he finished the last point two or three miles with me. And <clears throat> him and I, like I said, we're, we're very close friends. And we had a very personal and close conversation between there and the summit of that of, of getting up to the top of Whiteface, and I'll never forget it. I'm not going to share it just because it's just between him and I, but it was, you know, one of those ones that stays in the mountains, you know? Sure. Um, and I, I really was glad I was able to share that with him. We got to the top and, um, I brought a, um, we had a bottle of champagne with my family down below. We all split it. It was just a little bit, but I brought a cheap one up to the top because I just wanted to spray the sign. Like I was like, that was in my mind. I wanted to do it. So I I sprayed the sign. He took pictures and it was, it was really cool because there was a a few people who were actually doing their first high peaks. So it was there. That was their first one. And they were really bummed because it was all clouded in. It was a, it was a day that was, you get up there and you can't see anything, you know? And I understand the frustration in that. For me, it, it didn't bother me at all because I'd been up on Whiteface a million times, right? It's my home. Um, so I kind of told them a story about right before I did the, the whole barefoot thing. Um, I told these guys a story of, of, why being up in the clouds and on a bad day, why it's such a good day. And I learned this the week before I did Cascade barefoot. The week, so that was a Wednesday, it was July 8th. The week before that, July 1st, I wanted to go up and do high, uh, I've never done a, I had never done a, a sunrise hike at that point. Um, when I, so I was like, I want to go up and do this. I didn't look at the weather. I didn't do anything. I just wanted to go do it. So I get there and it's, so the week before and I'm like, I'm going to get up there for sunrise. I had my boots on. I had my dog with me. It wasn't like I did it barefoot or anything. So I started hiking and I put my headlamp on and literally couldn't see the ground. Like that's how foggy and misty it was. So I get to, you know, I'm like, you know what? I'm just going to do it anyway. So and maybe the clouds will clear. You know, this is, I'm always a kind of a positive looking person. So I get to the top and it was the most, it was sunrise, but you couldn't tell it was like, it was yeah. like the, mo- the most socked in day. And I was a little bummed at first, kind of like these per- people were on their first one in, in, in Whiteface. But then I kind of sat down and I, at that time, I, I always carry a heavy pack because I feel like it's training. Like the, the more, the heavier I can go. And just because I'm slower, I'm still training. So eventually, if one day, if I really need to go quicker, I can take the pack off and I know I can fly. So I brought up like my coffee maker and a breakfast thing to make up there. I just kind of wanted to have, a, you know, something like that, like a picnic for myself. 
And I sat down with my dogs and I started making my coffee. And I was like, you know what? Like, this is actually really cool. There's nobody up on Cascade. Like, when does that happen? Not very often. Um, I'm up here by myself. And yes, I know that there's a beautiful view out there. There is. And it's kind of like life. Like, you look at life where you're always looking to the next thing. Like, where am I going to go next? Like, what's my next thing I'm going to get to? And I realize, like, like, I know there's great things out there. And I know there's beautiful views out there. But look at this view I have right now with these, you know, I'm sitting on this granite with, with the surveyor's thing right there. I'm making my coffee. I got my dogs. I've got everything I need right here. And it really taught me to live in the moment. Like, live where you are right now and enjoy it for what it was. And and I shared that story with these people on top of Whiteface where, and I think they took it to heart. I was like, you know, guys, you could have come up here on, you know, one of those perfect bluebird days. And, th- and I'm not saying there's anything wrong with a bunch of people up there because like we talked about earlier, I love people coming up and enjoying this. Get up here, come up and hike. Don't, don't listen to these people about, you know, too many people on the trails. Get up there and go do your hikes. But I said, you know, you have a unique experience right now. Like this is, it's me, you, my friend Logan, and your first hike. And yeah, it's socked in, but you're up here in the most beautiful place. Just enjoy it for what it is and know that you're going to have a journey going out forward. And you know what? It will make you come back and hike this peak again. Think of it that way. Like you're not just done with this peak. Now you want to come up and see what it was, but yet you're standing on the top of this in a very unique scenario um, with you know, myself being up here completing what I completed and you being up here and there's nobody else up here. It's also Corona. You can't walk around the class. So like, just take it in for what it is and enjoy every hike for what that hike does for you. And that's why I'm going to continue and always will continue to hike the 46 is because I could do them every day or even the same one. Let's just say we'll put throw Cascade out there. I could hike Cascade 365 days in a row and every time you hike that it's going to be different it's a different hike it's a different experience every single time for every single person yeah and that's why you know i can listen to people's stories about hiking the high peaks and i want to hear their stories because say i've hiked these mountains too but your story is drastically different than mine what you experience your days out there and that's why it's like it is a never-ending enjoyment at least for myself and for most people to just hear someone's 46er journey because it is a journey that's why i always use that word because that is what it is it really is a journey and um josh shared with me uh when he came in uh, i don't I, you might have gone with him when he told me he, you guys did the great range yeah, yeah um, great range traverse yep. yeah that when you guys did that and you told me like he told me how fast you guys did it and all of that i was like holy smokes like like it made me excited for you guys like i was like holy smokes like this is so cool like i want to do that next mm-hmm. and i think that's the the best thing and i think that's what we need to do more in in our hiking culture is instead of putting people down or or or, or you know talking negative about it be enjoy get enjoyment out of whatever makes somebody else happy with what they're doing just because it's not the way you wanted to do it doesn't mean it's the wrong way there isn't really a right way to do it there's your way to do it and it's kind of like my whole my way thing like this like i listened to frank sinatra and i went when i got up there this is my way it doesn't mean it's a way for everybody but i'm doing this my way and i love watching everybody else do it their way totally in on my Northville Placid Trail series. So I did the Northville Placid Trail this past spring and I broke it up into sections in like a very strange way because I had to break it up based on schedules, people dropping me off, picking me up. And you know what? I was debating whether I actually wanted to turn it into a series on my podcast. And then I was, but I was like, cause I was like, oh, well, people want to see here a through hike start to finish. But I yeah. said, you know what? No. <laughs> this is my way. Yeah. This is how I did it. And if you like it, great. great. It's the same trail, but yeah. you know what? This is my way. And I just, I owned it because that I is, love it that. was my way of doing it. You do it your way. Here's how I did it. And uh, here's the story. So that's, I, I could not agree with you more. And another thing going on with what you said about the clouds and being socked in. Yeah. 
it's kind of like an 